But here's what he teaches us about hell here. Three things. Number one, hell is the result of what you decide here on earth. The rich man is talking to Abraham and he's, he, he's trying to get some help. And Abraham replies to him. He says, son, remember that in your lifetime, you received these good things. Abraham's saying, hey, you made a choice in your lifetime. You chose to have your best life now rather than to follow me and to make the long-term investment. And ultimately, that's what you're on earth here for right now. You were on earth to make mainly a decision. Do you want a relationship with God or not? And what you decide here determines eternity. And that's why it's so important. Some people ask, they're like, okay, well, I've become a Christian. If that's why I'm here on earth, to decide whether or not I want a relationship with God, why doesn't God just zap me into heaven after I receive Christ into my heart? Because there are other people that haven't yet made that decision. And the reason why you are here is to help other people make that decision. And if your whole life, if you're a Christian, is not devoted to sharing the good news with other people, then I'll just tell you, you're wasting your life. The whole reason why you are here is to decide whether or not you will enter into heaven or not, whether you will enter into a relationship with Jesus or not. And every single moment after you make that decision is to be devoted to helping other people make that decision because it is the most important decision that anyone can ever make. People stress about decisions about, oh, I don't know if I'm going to buy this house or that house. It's a long-term financial decision. This is a long-term decision. It lasts forever. And so we learn that hell is the result of what you decide here on earth. Number two, hell is final. At the end of the passage, Abraham tells him, he says, there's a great chasm that has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot and nor can anyone cross over from there to us. Hell is a final destination. For those that go there, they will never get out. You know, there's a false teaching out there called purgatory. There is no intermediate state where you are in the in-between realm where eventually one day after years and years and years of paying it back or paying it forward or however you want to look at it, you can get into heaven. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that what you decide here on earth determines eternity, heaven or hell, and whatever that is, once you're there, it's final. And that's why, guys, there ought to be an urgency to receive Christ. There ought to be an urgency to share Christ. But not only is hell final, ultimately it's also painful. And that's the last thing we see here. Lazarus, he cries out and he says, I'm in agony. In fact, he's in so much agony that he's saying, I need water. Can Lazarus just dip the tip of his finger in water and just get me a little bit? It kind of mirrors Lazarus wanting the scraps off of his table. And he's saying, you know, I just, I just want a little drop of water. Now, the Bible describes hell and uses different pictures of hell in a lot of different ways. Uh, what's used here is fire. He says that he's in agony. Other parts of the Bible talk about people weeping, talking about there being a gnashing of teeth, people being in so much pain that they're literally grinding their teeth. Listen, I'm not sharing this because I like sharing this. If I'm honest with you, this is a part of the Bible that I would, if I didn't believe that the Bible was God's word and that Jesus was who he really said he was and that everything Jesus said was true, this is a part of the Bible I'd like to cut out sometimes. This is a part of the Bible that's not easy for me to preach, but I'm going to preach it because it's true and because it's important and because eternity is in the balance. So like a person that is in a burning building that shouts fire so that other people can get out and survive, that's what I'm going to do today. So that you could be saved by placing your faith in Christ and so that you can be motivated to share and show the love of Jesus to people that maybe haven't yet received it in their life. 
Now, when it comes to this topic of hell and describing what hell is and the fact that it's painful and, and final and the result of what you decide here on earth, many people, they'll ask the question, well, this is terrible, and the Bible says that God is love, so how could a loving God send people to hell? Like, I don't understand that. I, I wrestle with that, and I totally get where you're coming with there. I've wrestled with that question before. My good friend, uh, C.S. Lewis, I think one of the best writers of all time, Christian writers of all time, he says this. I want to read you this quote by him. He addresses that question. He says this. He says, there are only two kinds of people in the end. Those who say to God, thy will be done. And those to whom God says in the end, thy will be done. All that are in hell, choose it. Without that self-choice, there could be no hell. No soul that seriously and constantly desires joy will ever miss it. Those who seek, find. Those who knock, it is opened. People go to hell because it's their choice. What's that story if you've never heard of it before? It's the story of this rich father who represents God and he has two sons. And one of the sons says, Father, give me my share of my estate. Give me all my inheritance. Give me all the money I was gonna get when you're gonna die. But I want it before you die because I don't love you. I love your money. And so he takes all of his money and what does he do? He runs far away. And he goes into a far country and he spends all of his money on wild living. And there's this moment where he comes to himself and he realizes that he's messed up. He realizes that he's run away from his father. And so he runs back home. And what does the father do? He welcomes him back with open arms. And he showers him with love and grace and welcomes him into the family and throws a party for him. And that's God's heart towards every single person. He's saying, if you got breath in your lungs, it's because I love you. And if you're running away from me, every moment your heart is beating, it's my opportunity that I'm giving to you to run back to me. And if you would just run back to me, I would receive you with open arms. And it doesn't matter how far you've run away or how long you've been running. You come home to him and he receives you with love. But here's the deal. There comes a moment in your life where you cannot run back home anymore. There comes a moment in your life where your heart stops beating and your opportunity is done and your decision is final. And the question is going to be when you see God, to fa God face to face after you die, he's not going to ask you where you went to college. He's not going to ask you how much money you made. He's not going to ask you how many followers you had. He's going to ask you one question. What did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ. 